Hello, welcome to PlayStation Access. My name is Nathan. This is The Last of Us Part 2. Now, this is the same gameplay that was shown off at State of Play last week, but now I'm able to talk about the fact that I have played this section of the game um, and actually that um, PlayStation Access and I have a copy of the game and have completed it. I've played it all the way through and we cannot wait to tell you more about The Last of Us Part 2. Today and today's video can only be about this section and when it gets to the point where we can talk more about the game uh, we will be very very careful of spoilers. We want everybody to be able to enjoy the game that we've been able to enjoy. Um, even after release we will also be careful of spoilers then. Uh, for today what I want to do is talk about how it kind of feels to play The Last of Us Part 2, what this section of the game felt like, feels like. Um, and just some of the differences, some of the stuff that's in this area of the uh, of the game that wasn't apparent in this playthrough necessarily, um, and that the this kind of playthrough, which is quite a direct one I found, uh, did not explore. And I will start by saying that at this point in the uh, in my playthrough, I was already worried about the uh, noise that I was making. I'm inside. I'm going to pause here. This is something I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be stopping the video so I can chat a bit more. I'm inside, the audio design of the game is such that the way that the water echoes around your environment changes on what that environment is. I felt extremely worried, I'm anxious all of the time in this world. It's one of the qualities of playing The Last of Us, um, certainly the, the first game and I can tell you that part two is no different in this level. I was extremely anxious about being found, um, there's just a high tension running through it and whenever you're making noise, uh, it's horrible. And of course the cool thing about this section is, um, as everyone realised after State of Play, that there's a bit of an easter egg here, but what it means is there's a character in front of us um, who can't hear me because instead, I, st I was here for ages, I stopped here because I was like, hey, I know that no no the noise, and it's, uh, as everybody knows now, it's, it's Moon, um, it's the soundtrack to Hotline Miami, uh, and I would just, I watched my video back, I'm here for maybe 20 seconds, it's kind of, you know, just getting into it, it's my walking to work song, um, before this scene unfolded. Don't make a fucking sound. Hands up. Let me see. Let me see. Do you know a girl named Nora? Sure, yeah. Where is she? In the hospital. Where in the hospital? Yeah, they're, they're clearing out the upper floors. She's somewhere in there. I'm going to stop there on this screen. So that was um, really uh, a very, very good example of what The Last of Us does well. Um, violence as unglamorous, slightly haphazard. It kind of happens. It's dumb, exactly as Ellie says. Um, it's. Uh, I remember years and years ago, uh, Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley talking about um, No Country for Old Men being one of their big kind of um, influences in, in how violence is done. You know, like killing someone is kind of messy and horrible. And that was a great example of it. Some bespoke dialogue for that, in, in, like engagement. Um, I then stopped here for ages just looking at the PlayStation Vita, which is, I think pretty sure one of the newer, slimmer models of PlayStation Vita. I zoomed in with the scope. You can see that game being animated on screen important to confirm that too. Um, I did tons of resource gathering um, and there is a room behind us that Ellie does not explore in this playthrough. There's a little thing on that crate over there. It's kind of driving me nuts that they're not going to get it because this is what I did on my playthrough, consciously thinking about, fine, I might have the stuff that um, I need for this mission. I might be well stocked up, but what about the next mission? You know, you've got to be constantly doing both, using stuff, um, but also gathering stuff for your next mission. When I got here, um, I realized that, uh, you know, you just, you can feel that you're getting drawn into, uh, well, an encounter, but like a kind of a set piece, there's going to be some patrols, some routes around. Um, once the guard tower gets into view, I'm just going to have a little pause again. So my approach was, I saw the guard tower um, very similar to this. So I went into quiet mode and I saw a few, few people walking around. My This is one of the only encounters in the game that I restarted, um, not because uh, I was killed and I had to, um, but because I just didn't get it right. It was like I 
tried to use my bow to kill that guy in the tower. I waited like for him to walk around for two full rotations um, until there was no one directly underneath him. I shot and I hit that barrier that you can see and I think that that alerted someone below so they were looking at him when I then did get a lethal shot on him. And I was kind of like, this area is clearly a gift of stealth you know there's like tons of options there's long grass there's short grass there's um cover everywhere there's a tower to investigate i want to do this properly so i i restarted it and um i then after that my approach was i mean i can't compete with that kind of headshot i just can't compete my approach was crouch stealth up behind people stealth kill um, after grabbing them, just grabbing everybody. It's basic, basic stealth, but it's so um, effective. When we come around uh, this ambulance, this is basically, oh yeah, one other point is once you've grabbed people, you get a little second there, half a second maybe, like you saw where, where they don't react immediately. So you can, you don't have to creep all the way up to them. And also once you've grabbed them, you can move them a bit. So if you want to get them back into um, cover, into the long grass or behind an object so that the other patrols aren't going to see them then you do have that opportunity and i did that almost instinctively and it was interesting coming back to this video and watching it again and seeing it was done here too um i wanted to pause it here because this is the front of the hospital that you can see right in front of you there's the um covering there and above that the sign um that's the way that i went in um, I basically did a couple more stealth kills and then the dog which ellie is about to turn into a hot dog <laughs> in this demo um, came out of the grass to my left um, and that's when I broke stealth shot the dog uh, and then I threw stun bombs which we're going to see in the crafting menu in a second and that's how I made my approach broke stealth you started using my equipment basically I also wanted to point out you're not going to be able to see it no, the whole kind of everything to the right of the main doors here is not seen in this demo but is explorable there's a tent over there with I think two other people patrolling maybe more and it might be that Ellie encounters them in this demo, but they're inside because they've been attracted by the killing. Um, but there are tons of resources in there and there's a whole other route into the hospital. So just in terms of the number, you know, the different ways to approach this, uh, that was one which I didn't even discover until I had done my thing, which was straight up the middle, kill everyone and then have a walk around. Um, so this is kind of what I mean when I say that this gameplay is very good because there's lots of headshots, but also very direct. Um, we also see Ellie picking up um, a melee weapon uh, over and above the knife that she has, and now we're into the crafting menu. Got to admit, I did not do any craft. I tend not to do crafting in um, combat scenarios because I just don't know if I can think fast enough. I tend to be a preparer. They're all in there. I've got a, a jostling backpack. Um, but take a look at the crafting menu. Um, She's obviously making herself a Molotov, which we see her use in just a second. Available, the spanner signs are things that are craftable. Um, available right beneath the Molotov there is an upgraded melee weapon. So that plank of wood can become a plank of wood with some scissor blades, it looks like, um, duct tape to it. Very effective. It just makes it slightly um, stronger. It can withstand more blows. She could craft arrows there to the right-hand side um, next to the melee weapon. And then one up from that, she could craft a stun bomb or a trap mine. I actually used a trap mine as well and I'll point out where it's in the main desk uh, in the reception. Um, the main thing that I notice about when you, Ellie's nailing headshots, whoever's playing this, Ellie's nailing headshots in this playthrough. And when you're using a suppressor, one of the most frustrating things is you get a limited number of shots. You make the suppressor with like a drinks bottle. Um, you have a limited number of shots. When you miss one, fair enough, you're still in stealth, but you know, you, you know you've missed out on an opportunity to get a really clean headshot. I was trying, you know, Molotov is a good option for dog and a handler. The way that the dogs work and can track you, they can follow your scent trails. Um, so that is why I was planning to use a Molotov as well and why when the dog emerged from the grass, my instinct was, it's a, I'm gonna, rather than risk this, I'm going loud. Another headshot. Whoever is, whoever is playing knows what they're doing and is conserving their ammo beautifully. So we're to the kind of, to the right. Over there to the right is the main entrance. That's where I came in. I didn't come down this corridor until later, although I, yeah, I just like that. I think I did kill that person with a bow as well. So I was loud by this point. I, so that's 
That's the really satisfying noise of the suppressor breaking. I was loud by this point. I'd come in through here. I threw a stun bomb. That means that the enemy is stunned. You can run up to them with a melee weapon and crunch them with one hit. I did that twice. Then I did another ra regular melee kill. Then I had a, a bottle in that brick slot. I switched to that really quickly, threw the bottle in someone's face, and then stabbed them in the neck. And it was not stealthy, but there is something about i kind of planned what i was going to do you know i had these different ways as i was depleting my um like that stun bomb put someone down i'm not smart enough to grab them i certainly wouldn't have pulled off the headshot afterwards but this is kind of similar to my mo now she's on the move i was still at this point i kind of broke i broke away from the engagement and then i came back with it with a bit of stealth even when there are people still in the um Headshot. Even when there are people still in the uh, level like that, you can try and progress to the next area. Obviously, then your your action can be interrupted, and that can be very dangerous. I feel like whoever's playing is very good and knows that if you get the head in the kind of bottom half of the circle there, the reticule, you're going to be good for headshots. And actually, I've been back to the game since I watched this demo, and it seemed pretty effective. It didn't actually help me to get better at aiming, but at least I had something that I was aiming for. So yeah, sorry, I just wanted to make the point about my entrance. It was loud, it was pretty messy, but it still felt like a kind of an action sequence that was happening um, spontaneously. It felt really, really fantastic. Uh, I cannot move this quickly through any section of this game. I'd be creeping, I'd be listening. Um, I would be looking for resources, little story tidbits here and there, um, collectible bits. Having just had Hotline Miami, the fact that this song came up was just a moment. Um, I love it as well that, I don't know, when you attach little bits of uh, culture to characters that you don't really know anything about or care anything about, um, Isaac talks to us about this. It can really give them a kind of a depth, Nora. you know. I, whoever is Nora. down there listening to Ice Cube, down for her, man. I feel more for that character than I would have done. So the only thing that I did differently here, we're really approaching the end of the demo now. The only thing I did differently here was that kind of old Dark Souls thing. If I drop down in this corridor, I'm facing a particular way, so I'm gonna go back the other way and I'm going to pick up a bunch of stuff and there is a shelf there with you can actually see it flashing I think there uh, with a bunch of stuff on it also pains me Ellie get the tape you got to get the tape Ellie get the tape that tape's good you can make things with the tape um, but it's gone and then we're into the final cutscene don't scream put that shit down You remember me? Yeah. You remember me. Nice. That look. Um, the look that's given in instead of Nora talking is says a thousand words. Fantastic. Um, that is our retake on. Uh, the Last of Us Part 2 State of Play demo, hopefully with a bit of uh, insight from um, me having played that section of the game and being hands-on, being able to tell you a little bit more about it. Like I said, we are very, very keen to be able to share more about the game with you um, before release. We're going to try and do it in a sensitive way that gets you uh, excited and gets you to know some of the things that you want to know about the game without spoiling the game for you. Um, that's going to be coming up very soon. We're going to have tons more on the channel. Uh, Stay tuned. For the players.